Hello. So in this video, we're going to see how we can do a calculation of a leg for a cross-country trip using the Sporties Electronic E6B. So we're going to be calculating the first part of a cross-country from the Rockcliffe Airport CYRO to CYGK Kingston. This has two legs. Uh, the first one would be from Rockcliffe to the set heading point, and we're really not going to calculate that because set heading point you should be able to get there uh, pretty easily. And uh, we'll show you how we would enter the information, but that's it. And then uh, we'll do in detail the leg from the uh, set heading point to Kingston. So I set up a little bit of the data ahead of time already in here. Um, so our, our leg to Constance Lake would be um, essentially 14 miles. Our climb speed would be 73. And you could easily calculate the time from the charts in the POH. So Constance Lake to Kingston, our altitude I've picked to be 4,500 feet uh, westward direction generally, and minimum uh, obstacle clearance altitude at 2,500 feet. Uh, from the POH, 105 would be our uh, true airspeed. The distance I've measured on the, with the ruler and I've got other videos or we have other videos that show you how to do that. And the distance was uh, 75. So given those information, now I need some information about weather. Now we're going to ignore the fact that, um, in fact, the the uh, overcast 3,000 feet, etc. cetera, uh, but we'll use the temperatures and we'll use the altimeter settings. That's what I really want. So starting from the Rockcliffe end here, um, or Ottawa Gatineau, which is the closest airport, our temperature minus 11 and altimeter setting 3,003. And the temperature and um, altimeter setting is not that far off at Kingston, but given that there is actually a bit of a front going there, uh, it's a little bit lower, but again, we're going to ignore that. So that's uh, first thing that we need is our altitude. Temperature, uh, let's see temperature at altitude here. So um, if you look at these temperatures here for the period that we'd be doing this, um, 3,000 feet is very different from 6,000 feet, uh, so, but the uh, temperature and the uh, wind direction is pretty consistent after that up to 12,000 feet. So I'm going to use the 6,000 foot uh, data here. So 280, 8 knots, tw minus 12 temperature. And so that's, we'll enter that in here. So if you remember, uh, 3003 was our uh, altimeter settings. I'll just write this up here. Altimeter 3003, our temperature minus 12. And so now we need to calculate, the first thing we want to calculate is pressure altitude. So I reset this to zero. So it's uh, as if you were going to an exam and uh, by removing the battery. So we have no data from previous calculations. So the first thing we want to do is calculate uh, pressure altitude. Now you'll note, the buttons here actually correspond to the data that you see here or the selection items in most cases anyways not quite that way uh, it shows fuel blinking here but that's not what we want that's the last thing we want actually so let's start with heading ground speed and pressure density altitude that's the first button so heading ground speed is flashing i don't want that yet what i do want is pressure and density altitude so enter so it's going to ask me for indicated altitude for that would be 4,500. Enter. Uh, barometric pressure, so 30.03. Don't forget the decimal. You'll get some pretty interesting results if you just put in 3,003. Uh, so enter again and temperature. Uh, we don't need temperature to calculate pressure altitude, but it's going to calculate density altitude for us at the same time. So 12, but it's minus. So I use the plus minus sign here to make it into not a very big minus sign, but it's right there, it's right behind the, uh, the number. So here we go. Enter and wait a bit. So 4398 is my 
uh, pressure altitude, which is reasonable because my barometric pressure is higher. So the airplane is going to think that it's, uh, that it's lower. And my density altitude is 2118. So pressure altitude, 4398. So um, next is uh, I really want to do is actually do heading and ground speed because now that I needed that information. So let's do that. Uh, so wind direction we said was 280. 280, actually I can write it down here, 28008 uh, knots, 280, enter, and eight knots, enter. Uh, course is 200, 200, enter, and a true airspeed, so 105. So all those pieces of information which I collected earlier are useful now. And I wait for my calculation. So my ground speed is going to be 103. So ground speed 103. And my true heading is uh, 204. So let's think about that. Is that reasonable? 204. So my uh, true track is 200, so southwest. My wind is coming from actually a little bit of northwest. So that means I'm going to need to crab this way. That means my number and my heading number should be greater than my track number, which it is, 204 as opposed to 200. And my ground speed should be lower than my true airspeed because I've got wind, I've got a headwind. And yes, it is 103. Good. So that makes that all make sense. Always important to double check those things. So uh, next thing I want to calculate it here is calculate the um, indicated airspeed, calibrated airspeed. Now I can't actually calculate indicated airspeed with this uh, this calculator. I have to look that up in the um, in the POH. But so I press the required button because I show it showed me CAS down at the bottom here. So I'm going to go down to CAS calibrated airspeed. So pressure altitude it's already it's remembered that temperature it's remembered that uh, true airspeed it's remembered that and Ta -da. So my calibrated airspeed is 101.8. I'm going to round that up to 102. So 102. Again, makes sense because my pressure altitude or even density altitude is uh, higher than sea level. Therefore, my, indicated, my airspeed indicator is going to show somewhat less than true airspeed. So that's good. Now, indicated airspeed, I'll calculate using table in the pilot operating handbook if I have one. Uh, if there isn't one, like a Piper, for instance, then I'll just use the calibrated airspeed. So variation for that is, multi is more or less 14. So 218 would be my magnetic heading. Compass heading, I'll figure out just before going flying. So the next thing I want to do is calculate the flight time so I can calculate the fuel. So fairly simple here. Um, Again, a required fuel. Oh, sorry. No, no not right. Uh, flight. I'm going to go in here. And what I'm looking for is leg time. So, <coughs> I see you might not be able to see what I was uh, doing here. So, let's move this up. So, leg time. So, again, uh, the distance is 75. Um, enter. My ground speed is 103, 104, enter, and so 43 and minutes and 34 seconds. 43 and 34. Fuel rate I've calculated to be from the POH again, 7.6. So um, I can go back now to fuel, the required fuel, enter. It knows the night time, and just need to add in. Um, Fuel per hour, 7.6. Enter, and 5.5 is my answer. So in summary, what we need to do is we need to do five calculations. First of all, we want to calculate pressure altitude. Uh, for that, I need altitude that I've selected, altimeter setting, and temperature, because it's going to give me density altitude as well. And how I do it is I press the uh, heading ground speed and uh, pressure and density altitude button, and then enter the information. But then I want to calculate heading ground speed, and I need just hit the heading ground speed button again, and then what it needs is wind, direction, 
uh, wind speed and wind direction course or track as we call it in Canada, we call it in Canada and true airspeed and that'll give me my true heading remember it's important to, to convert that to uh, to magnetic and then ground speed indicated calibrated airspeed will be doing using the uh, required calibrated airspeed button and the for that I need pressure altitude temperature and true airspeed the last uh, second to last calculation flight time again uh, what I need is flight the flight button and then leg time so I need for that I'm going to need distance and ground speed which are already uh, the ground speeds already there I just need to enter the distance and then finally fuel I need time which is calculated already that would be required fuel and then I just need to add in the fuel rate and now we've got all of the calculations I need all of the data that I need for this leg to fly this leg uh, except for compass heading which I'll need to see the uh, aircraft documents to figure it out so hope this helps uh, thank you for watching Thank you.